Scar 17's E Optics for breakfast, and then they're still hungry like 20 minutes later. And it's like optics for a scar, they're like Chinese food for humans. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to Tactical Review. So today we're we're starting in with uh, I wouldn't call it a series, but it's going to be a a continuing evaluation of an optic that was made by viewer request. So I, I have a viewer who's been very active uh, on my Wednesday live streams, and which is where he made the request. He's been showing up in the live chat during premiere times, and. Uh, viewer with the username mark 18 mod zero and he had asked me about the ACOG style uh, no magnification simple fiber optic red dot I thought he was actually asking about the terminus optics TOC one but we got that clarified and uh, I found an example of that at a reasonable price got this on Amazon with prime shipping uh, you find these under many different brand names. So I've got this in. I thought we'd unbox this, uh, maybe get this mounted on a rifle, kind of discuss what we're going to do through the lifespan of this. Uh, but today we're going to start with uh, unboxing and some initial, uh, some initial thoughts on the optic. So we're going to get the camera reset so that you can see what we're doing, and we're going to unbox this guy, see what all's inside the box. All right, well, I do apologize here for this goofy angle. I've got a standard tripod and it's not exactly the best thing to use for this, but I think that we've got the shot focused in quite all right. Uh, and you'll notice right away that it is the basically the exact same box that the Terminus Optics TOC-1 came in, which is the same kind of box that every one of the knockoff ACOGs I've seen come in, as long as they're not trying to uh, trying to sell themselves off as like a used Trigicon. This particular one is the Ohunt uh, 1x32 real fiber optic. It's got a Picatinny round mount. Uh, you can see here, made in China, so uh, hopefully I don't get coronavirus from making this video. And simple, just real simple packaging here. We've got a lint-free cloth and the optic itself. So see here construction wise it is identical on the outside to the Terminus Optics TOC1. This one has absolutely no external branding. The casting seems very smooth uses a standard Trigicon base, which gave us problems with the TOC-1. So we will, uh, well actually I'm going to reach over here and grab our fat wrench and we are going to go ahead and check for thread sealant on this right now. All right. And just as I feared, I don't see any kind of thread locker on that. So, go ahead and take out the other one as well. And before we do anything with this, we'll get some Loctite on there because I am going to be using the Picatinny rail mount. And from everything I've read, this is a standard ACOG style mounting base. So if you had a different kind of ACOG uh, mount that you were wanting to use, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to use that. Got some handy dandy blue thread lock here. And I mentioned this in the Terminus Optics video, but everything I've been able to see says that uh, 30 inch pounds is what you want to torque these ACOG base screw 
these ACOG base screws too. All right, well, that should function for now. And uh, looking through there, it appears, you can see that the front glass has a reflective coating on it. It's got the fiber optic. There's no batteries on this. This uh, does function just by channeling light through the fiber optic to the inside. Um, this does, well here, we're, we're gonna just reset the camera here. Uh, as you can see, there's nothing else in the box and it appears as though everything else about this is just like the uh, Terminus Optics TOC1. You have your elevation adjustment on the top, your windage adjustment on the side. Uh, there's no arrow on them indicating which way is which. And um, I'll be honest, I don't remember which way is which. So I will have to go back and look at my documentation from when I zeroed the TOC1. Um, tactile and audible clicks when you make the adjustments. There are rubber gaskets down around the, uh, around the turret caps. So all things considered, I would expect the same kind of longevity out of this as out of the TOC-1 and possibly in some ways even more because there's no prism in this. I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see that you can see my hand straight through this. With a magnified optic, with a magnified ACOG or fake ACOG, uh, you wouldn't be able to see straight through from the other way because there is in fact a, a prism in there. So uh, let's get some things adjusted here and I'm gonna see if I can show you the dot. This is a green dot, you can see from the green fiber optic on there. Um, this is available with a green fiber optic, a red fiber optic. I believe I've seen them with an amber fiber optic. Uh, and they're also available in both a black and a desert tan or a sand color uh, body. The, the Amazon listing from which I purchased this didn't give any options and pictures showed some of all of the above. So I wasn't entirely sure what color I was getting. So anyway, let me rearrange the camera a little bit here. All right, yeah, you're just staring at a blank sectional wall there. And you can see there that there's just a simple dot. Sorry, trying to uh, bring that back straight to the camera is a little unsettling when I'm looking through the viewfinder. But you can also see that it appears as though there is infinite eye relief. And um, yeah, I'm not sure how it's going to be for parallax. Uh, but that's one advantage that this would have over the magnified optics is with the magnified optics, there's obviously a set eye box. All right, so uh, what my intentions are with this is Mark 18 Mod Zero asked me if I had used one of these, if I had any kind of feedback, if I knew whether or not this particular optic or this type of optic would hold zero under the recoil of a centerfire rifle load. And then the wise guys in the live chat suggested that I put it on a uh, SCAR 17 Heavy, which I don't have. So what we're going to do with this guy is we're going to put it on my Palmetto State Freedom Rifle uh, that I've still yet to, you haven't seen any more videos on this guy because I haven't started the actual torture process. Uh, the nice thing is that with having unlimited eye relief, I should be able to co-witness it. The problem is with this simple uh, rear sight that I have, 
I don't know that they're going to coexist. In fact, I'm very confident they're not going to coexist. So, well, we've got to have progress. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this guy off, like so. And we're going to put this guy on. And as per the norm for non-magnified optics, I am going to put it as far forward on the receiver as I can. And from the looks of things, I may still not get backup irons on there. All right. So. All right. And I've seen various torque numbers for these cross bolt nuts. I'm going to go ahead and go with 30 inch pounds. If you guys know of a different torque spec that I should be using on these cross bolt screws with that when everything is metal like this uh, go ahead and let me know down in the comments but for now 30 inch pounds is what we're gonna go with and as always make sure that you bump your optic forward because recoil is gonna shove the rifle back underneath the optic and jam the optic forward anyway so just go ahead and get that shoved as far forward into the pick rail sockets and pit rail, pick rail slots as you can uh, so that you don't have that messing with your zero as you get a zero it's a really bright dot now unfortunately it's only fiber optic. So this is definitely not a life and liberty optic. We've talked about that before. I think it'll be a great optic on this particular rifle whose lot in life is to be abused. Um, and I will keep you guys posted on zero holding and stuff. And I think part of the reason that I opted to put it on this particular rifle is because I think that as I'm going through the process of running a thousand rounds at a time um, through this, seeing how long it stands up to that with uh, steel cased ammunition, I think it's going to just be also a great way to test the zero holding ability of this optic. And that's really what we're going here. So Mark 18, obviously this isn't something that I can give you definitive answers right now. Out of the box, I can tell you that it's at least got the same quality of materials or appears to have the same quality of materials as the Terminus Optics TOC-1 uh, that I've already reviewed. I have several hundred up to maybe a thousand rounds through the rifle underneath that Terminus Optics and it still appears to be holding zero fairly well. Uh, if, as a matter of fact, it was just a couple weeks ago, I confirmed zero on the 25 yard range, grouped nicely, and was, you know, a couple inches low, just like I would anticipate. So, um, does that mean it's great quality? No, but I also think there's fewer moving parts in this one. Um, the, just like all of these, the fiber optic is not pinned through the end, it is just glued in place. But there's no reason for there to be a prism inside of this. It's basically just a straight through tube with a coating on this end of the tube so that you get a reflection of the dot. It appears as though, looking inside of here, it appears as though the fiber optic terminates into an emitter of sorts. So it's going to shine that light forward onto this glass where it's reflected back. Uh, I could be completely wrong. That's based on observation, and obviously I didn't tear this down. Now, the one thing that does bother me is it appears that, once again, even with the optic able to be pushed forward because there's no particular eye box with it being uh, unmagnified, it looks like I'm still giving up my iron sights. So, if you hold on one moment, though, I will dig out Okay, yeah, that little, ignore the little jump cut there. I do have a Magpul MBUS site here, and we will see if, by any miracle, 
this one will fit. And to do that, we're going to have to remove a charging handle. Or at least slide it back out of the way. <laughs> Boy, hey, hang on. I'm, I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna come closer to the uh, camera here. Absolutely. Whoops. I'm gonna get everything lined up here eventually. There, you can just see through there, and you can see that it does lock, and it absolutely could not be any further forward and still lock in place and what's more is it could not be any further back and this cross bolt go through matter of fact it might not go through now that's that's <laughs> that's a tight fit that, that's that's crazy but I don't know if you can see through there I mean it will co-witness all right anyway so I'm, I'm not gonna lie I'm really really shocked that that even worked I was not figuring it would unfortunately unfortunately I had this rear in bus site zeroed on the M&P 15 and so I'm, I'm what I was hoping to be able to do because this was zeroed you can go back and watch my uh, first shots video on this rifle and see me zero that. And I was really hoping that I could show you how to use your co-witness to do a rough zero on a new optic. Unfortunately, I can't do that. And I know some of you guys know how to do that. Um, matter of fact, a lot of you guys who watch my videos really know your stuff when it comes to firearms so I kind of wonder why you're watching my videos uh, I, I mean I appreciate your viewership don't get me wrong it just I go and I watch some of you guys and stuff and I'm like this guy knows his stuff why is he watching me but some of you guys don't realize that if you have iron sights that are zeroed and you put a red dot that you're able to co-witness on that rifle you can actually get down on your rifle and move that red die caught it move that red die to where it lines up with your iron sights much the same way that i use the bore sight laser in my handgun to rough zero my holosun 507 and as a matter of fact when i go to the range with this whole setup i'm going to use a a uh, drop in laser bore sight a 223 laser bore sight and get a rough zero um, because if you'll recall with the terminus optics the and i've mentioned this previously on other videos too the the optic didn't even have a rough zero out of the box some of them will be pretty close to where you're at least on paper that terminus optics at 50 yards i was shooting something like two feet left and a foot high so uh, I will use the laser sight to get close on the 25 yard range where I can see and then we'll move out and confirm at 50 because I am going to maintain that 50 to 50 zero on this. So anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and torque this down. Now this is a basic Magpul Inbus sight. It actually came with the M&P 15 so you don't torque down plastic accessories to 30 inch pounds. You don't do that. Um, the Embus site wants to be torqued to 18 to 20 inch pounds, so I'm right in that range on my fat wrench now. So we'll just run that in. And there we go. And I will say, looking at this, yes, you. No, you can't. <laughs> so you you won't be using the ghost ring aperture on your on your Magpul sight in conjunction with this uh, with this 
optic in this configuration. Okay, uh, and I'm not saying that's the best of everything. You can hear it slap that optic when it goes up, uh, but I suppose if the glass breaks or the fiber goes bad in this optic, that it will at least give you a fine, oh, you know, the peephole reticle. So um, it has definitely reverted this into the realm of a true backup site. My goal for the weekend was actually to go ahead and get out to the range and get the zeroed and we would do our first shots and that's just not going to happen. Um, the weekend didn't allow for it. it. It is what it is. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. Life happens. But uh, I thought I'd take some first looks at this. Uh, definitely make sure uh, Mark 18 that you know that it's here and that we will be working with it. And... Uh, you know, let you find folks know that uh, I didn't perish in the snows that came through the Midwest this weekend. I'm still right here. I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube to ring that notification bell. And if you like what you're seeing on the channel, share it with your friends. Uh, that channel growth obviously helps me out. It's going to help you guys out. We're so close right now. At the end of January 2020, and we are so close to that 250 subscriber mark. We'll be having a giveaway for that. I've already got prizes. And uh, I mentioned uh, a prize that I wasn't anticipating that I'm very excited about in my live stream this past Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's get to that point. I'm looking forward to giving stuff away. If you're not following the channel on social media, you should be doing that. That use, Those usernames are up on the screen right now. And guys, on social media, it gives me a good way to interact with you guys outside of the live chats that we have in the premieres and in the live streams here on the channel. And if you'd like to help support the channel, uh, help buy accessories like this optic here, ammunition for torture tests and things like that you guys can do that over on patreon really appreciate my patreon supporters you guys already know that shooting is one of the more expensive hobbies you can have turns out if you use that for a youtube channel you make it even more expensive so thanks guys for your support thanks for watching until next time shoot straight stay safe